Ladies and gentlemen, I have broken that heart. This is JD from New York. Actually, delete to JD from New York. I have cleaned this vessel. Make sure to check out his wondering show off the script. It's absolutely delightful. Wow. What is going on guys? JD from New York here. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel this morning. It is Friday, November 3rd, 2017 and it is unseasonably fucking warm right now in New York City. We're beginning November and it's over 70 fucking degrees. I got my dad calling me saying that he's gonna fucking barbecue tonight. I'm like, it's not July, it's November, it's pissing me off that we just went through a 30 degree, 40 degree day, and now we're back into the mid-70s, but I'm no fucking meteorologist, man, but this is the number one professional wrestling podcast right here on YouTube.com. This is episode 194, part number one for Off The Script. Thank you guys so much for joining me on your Friday, starting your weekend off the right way with Off The Script. I got a major episode for you guys, man. This is going to be your pre-Survivor Series overload. I have so much Survivor Series news that could be vital information as we head into Houston in just two weeks. Survivor Series is going to be coming to us very soon and major plans could be changing as it concerns the Survivor Series. One of them being the top story today. Shane McMahon announced via social media last night that AJ Styles will go one-on-one -on -one with the failure himself. The man who is single-handedly ruining SmackDown Live. The man that Paul Heyman has stated is... The make-believe Maharaja! <laughs> Jinder Mahal versus AJ Styles on SmackDown Live for the WWE Championship this coming Tuesday. And I will explain why WWE could very well be changing plans for the Survivor Series. We're also going to go over Asuka and her main roster plans for the Survivor Series and how it's causing a major headache from Monday Night Raw Creative. I'm going to tell you exactly whether you like it or not. I'm going to tell you exactly how to book Asuka at the Survivor Series. So we're going to go over all that plus so much more. I got a Wrestle Crate unboxing that we're going to unbox in just a couple of seconds for October. I didn't do it last week. Today we're going to do that right here on the show. And so much more, man. We're going to go over everything. We're going to have uh, a good time here on, on Off The Script. Uh, I want to thank everybody for your love and support, man. Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, NXT reviews are live. NXT was easily the best show this week with the major announcement of NXT TakeOver War Games being official. The official rules for War Games are leaked. Uh, WWE sent out a press about the new rules, the WWE-esque rules for War Games coming at TakeOver. I will go over all of those on Wednesday when we talk about NXT, and I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on that. So make sure you guys go and check out those three videos as well. Uh, also, we did a WWE Off The Script Extra on Thursday, talking about Finn Balor leaving the WWE. Is there truth to the rumor uh, with the Balor Club leaving the WWE? Finn Balor, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson all, I am sure, seemingly upset with creative direction in WWE. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson actually took WWE out of their Twitter uh, profiles. And Finn Balor actually tweeted out a picture of a tombstone on Halloween saying goodbye. So, uh, is there any truth to those rumors? I talk about it on Off The Script Extra, so make sure you guys go and check that out. It is live on the channel right now. It'll be within the annotation that you see in this video so make sure you guys go and show some support for all that stuff that was uploaded on the channel this week. So that is that. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that bell for all notifications. Thank you guys so very much. Today's podcast is being brought to you by BarbershopWindow.com. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script is your number one online store for off the script merchandise. 
We have some of the best merchandise for any podcast anywhere on the planet on Barber Shop Window with two more designs coming, two new designs coming for Black Friday. And you guys know Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, the biggest shopping day of the year is fast approaching. It'll be here before you even blink. There will be two more designs coming up for Pro Wrestling Tees. Biggest sale of the year. I'm coming out with the first ever benched t-shirt. And I'm coming out with a exclusive gender only. Gender only. Yes, Jinder Mahal is getting his own Get Off My TV shirt. So make sure you guys check out barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. $19.99. They ship worldwide. So make sure you guys get your t-shirts this holiday season for Off the Script. We're going to do the Russell Crate unboxing, man. Russell Crate was kind enough to send me. This one's actually a lot heavier than the last month's crate, which was god-awful, by the way. And I even stated that uh, on their Twitter because I don't hold anything back. Uh, if you guys are interested in anything that you see here, let me hit my button here. WrestleCrate.com is the place to go. You guys got 16 days to sign up to get next month's crate, or this month's crate, rather, for November. WrestleCrate.com. You're going to pick your subscription. You're going to enter the coupon code at the end of checkout. And the coupon code that's going to save you 20% off, I believe, is going to be JD Sent Me. So make sure you guys go and check that out if you are interested in anything in this crate. WrestleCrate.com. And then the coupon code JD Sent Me at checkout for instant savings on WrestleCrate. See what we got in here, man. This month it is what is the theme? It is Halloween, of course. It's the Halloween themed Wrestle Crate. I don't know what's in here, but there seems to be two t shirts in here, so it's already better than the last box. What do we got here, man? Gangrel. That's a nice looking t shirt, man. It's a nice looking t shirt right there. Gangrel. Yeah, look at that. And Wrestle Crate deals with Barbershop Window and. Pro Wrestling Tees. So, that's that. Gangrel, man. That's a nice looking design there. Gangrel t-shirt in this month's Wrestle Crate. Nice looking t-shirt. I love these things, man. Uh, I have Seth Rollins. I have AJ Styles. I have Brock Lesnar. And now I can add... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I, I, I gotta do it. The new face of fear, man. The new face of fear. JoJo. Why don't you show me your fat ass, Jojo? Finn Balor, you're nothing but a mere mortal compared to me, Bray Wyatt, man. I had viral meningitis, man. I kept myself off of the TLC pay-per-view, man. All I wanted was to see Jojo shake her fat ass as I sat in my rocking chair. With my lantern, man. Bray Wyatt, man. There you go. Bray Wyatt Magnet, right there. And WrestleCrate.com. So now I can add him to the collection that's on my refrigerator right now. Ooh. This is a damn good crate already, man. Good thing I didn't buy this. Because, uh, what do we got here, man? Is this a large? It is a large. This is a thick fucking t-shirt, man. Holy shit. Uh-oh. This is what Scott Steiner really looks like, bro. Look. Frankensteiner. Man, they did a beautiful job on what Scott Steiner really looks like. Unbelievable. Look at that, man. That's a clear-cut representation of Scott Steiner. I don't know what I don't know what the fuck he looks like now. He's probably all, all dwindled and fucking decrepit with all the steroid abuse that he's uh, done to himself over the years, but that's a, that's a clear-cut indication of, uh, of what Scott Steiner really looks like, bro. They did a good job on that T-shirt. Oh, my God. Can I get enough of this fucking guy this month? Are you fucking kidding me? Look at this shit. My God. I don't even need, I don't even need to say anything, bro. I don't even need to say anything. You guys know what I feel about that. Uh, what do we got? We got random candies in here, bro. Didn't your parents ever tell you don't accept candies from strangers? I got Laffy Taffy. Look, strawberry. Right? Yeah, I'm laughing at fucking Jinder Mahal. Here you go. There you go. The make-believe <laughs> Roger. I got golden gummy bears. 
There you go, gold bears. And then I got, what the fuck is this? I got one random Jolly Rancher. Keep on sucking! It's the official sponsor of Monday Night Raw. No, no, no fucking wonder it's garbage every fucking week. I gotta keep up with the motto, you know? This is fucking great right here, man. Look at this. AJ Styles. Zombie. WWE action figure, man. That's fucking great. This alone is worth $15. Easy. So that's fucking great right there, man. That's uh, a, a uh, Mattel product. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, Sasha Banks, Brock Lesnar, and AJ Styles. A zombified AJ Styles right here in the Wrestle Crate for October, man. You guys are fucking great. Wrestle Crate might have the best fucking box this month, man. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. Uh, what is this, an air freshener? Am I really going to put this? Does it smell? I don't want to open it, then it's going to lose its smell. What is this? I got to look at the cheat sheet. Um, What the fuck is this? Yeah, it's a masked uh, Lucha air freshener. There you go. Oh, uh, there you go. A Lucha air freshener. Do I hang that in the Mustang? I don't know. I got to see what it smells like. If it smells like shit, then no. Headlocked Tales from the Road. This is something I will never read. I don't know why they bother putting this shit in the crates because I never read it. I end up throwing it away anyway. And of course, it's got to be Halloween themed. Nice little autograph here, man, to close out Wrestle Crate for the month of October. Gangrel autograph for October. WrestleCrate.com. And that is a beast fucking crate right there, man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to WrestleCrate, as always, if you guys are interested in anything. That's a great fucking box, man. I got to admit, that may, be the best, that may be the best unboxing that we did out of all three with that wrestling club and Pro Wrestling Crate. Uh, that might be the best crate unboxing that we've done all month, man. And that was a, a really, really nice comeback for, uh, for last month's disgrace of a crate. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, but if they, you know, give you a crate like that and then come back and hit a grand slam, I'm not really going to mind it too much. I know not every month is going to be great, but this was a great fucking box. And I love that action figure, and I love the two t-shirts, and I love the magnet of Bray Wyatt, man. That's good shit right there. So thank you to WrestleCrate, as always, for being a sponsor of the show once a month. You guys are great. Go check them out, man. That is WrestleCrate.com slash off. Actually, no, not off the script. It's just WrestleCrate.com. Just WrestleCrate.com. If you guys want to enter the coupon code, it's JD sent me at checkout. I got my fucking barbershop window link in my head. It's WrestleCrate.com slash nothing. It's just WrestleCrate.com. 16 days to get your box for November. Make sure you guys do that and enter the coupon code. Save yourself some money. Hopefully they come back with a nice box for Thanksgiving, man. Give thanks to all the fans for WrestleCrate for supporting them all year, man. So thank you so much to WrestleCrate as always for uh, sponsoring the podcast right here on Off The Script. Let's get into the news, man. We got news. We got news, news, news. And I don't want to waste any more of your time. I'm not even going to clean this up, man. I got fucking shit scattered all around me. We're not even going to clean it up. We're going to get right into the news, man. AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal. Why is WWE having a championship match of this magnitude before the Survivor Series? Now, you never know what can happen in the WWE, and I have no idea how many times uh, they have said that. Year after year after year after year. It's always something new with this company. Just when fans think they know what to expect. And I mentioned this on Tuesday's SmackDown Live review. It was a decent show, but WWE heading into the Survivor Series is making things a little bit too predictable. Now, this is going to throw a wrench into those gears. I don't know what the hell is going on for SmackDown Live right now. And WWE seemingly can switch things up and turn everything on its head at the last minute. And that's exactly what they seem to be doing. The failure, known as Jinder Mahal, was scheduled to face Brock Lesnar at the Survivor Series in a champion versus champion match. And then he was supposed to go to India and represent his people as champion. But WWE announced Mahal will defend his title against AJ Styles next week on SmackDown Live. Now, I want to go over this with you guys. You're going to be looking at this picture here. This is a photograph of a leaked photo that made its rounds on the internet for Survivor Series. And as you clearly can see, Jinder, Brock, and in the middle of those two men 
is John Cena. This is a legit photo. This was leaked this week. And John Cena was about, he could still very well be announced, but the plans right now, before we even get to Tuesday, are what you see here. Lesnar, Mahal, and John Cena adding the star power that WWE knows is missing from this colossal champion versus champion fight at Survivor Series, and John Cena is that missing piece. I don't know what WWE's plans are right now, but that's why I'm going over this as the top story right here on Off The Script. If this happens right now at Survivor Series, if this is the current plan and WWE stays this course, then WrestleMania in itself is going to have two matches at the top of the card that feature Jinder Mahal versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. And then we got Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania 34. And nobody wants to see that at all. So... Uh, hopefully things do change for WWE as we head into Survivor Series and then on into 2018. Dave Meltzer discussed this surprising decision on Wrestling Observer Live on Thursday. And he had a couple of theories why WWE is pulling the trigger on this match so quickly. Jinder Mahal could be injured and WWE needs to take the title off of him. After all, he's been wearing Kinesio tape on his shoulder at WWE Live events, although he's never sported it on television. Mahal denied he's been working hurt to ESPN, but kayfabe can go a long way in an interview with shills like ESPN. Another theory is simply that WWE wants a bigger marquee matchup for Survivor Series and sees AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar as a much bigger matchup than the failure known as Jinder Mahal Versus the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. Now, no matter, no matter what the reason might be, it looks like SmackDown Live could very well see AJ Styles as the WWE Champion very soon. The announcement from Shane McMahon regarding the main event for this coming Tuesday's episode of SmackDown Live in Manchester, England will be a taped show. I will not be looking at spoilers beforehand. I will be off social media all day. I hate these taped shows. Crowds might be nice and exciting, and vibrant, but I hate the fact that they happen six hours earlier than what we see here in the States, and spoilers will be out before we here in the States get to watch it. So Manchester, England, and the fans will be buzzing during Tuesday night's SmackDown Live. For those of you that missed it, McMahon announced that Styles will challenge Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship. I still, to this very day, don't believe that I'm putting WWE Championship and Jinder Mahal in the same sentence. Fucking please kill me. Originally, the plan was for Styles to face Rusev, with the winner getting a spot on Team SmackDown at Survivor Series, but those plans seemingly have changed. Now, I want you to look at these two social media posts by Rusev. This one I actually laughed at. Um, just look at his reply here for the Instagram post that he made. This is Rusev IG. This is his official Instagram page. Uh, watching hashtag Total Divas tonight with the wife at the Lana WWE. Hashtag goals. Just noticed that my wife's knees are a bit bruised. I wonder why. With the emoji eyes and a smiley face. Oh, Rusev, you little devil, you. What could he be talking about? I wonder what. I know what everybody is thinking. I know what the first thing that everybody's thinking popped into their head. And I know it wasn't professional wrestling. So Rusev, uh, he is a humorous individual on social media. This one, he posted on Twitter, I'm so good at AJ Styles Org already quit. Ha 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 ha. Go Team SmackDown. Hashtag Rusev Day is coming to the Survivor Series. So, I don't know what's going on with that, but plans are clearly not what they are going to be that was announced on Tuesday. Now, this uh, announcement has led to a ton of speculation online about Mahal standing as WWE Champion. Is he really injured to the point where he can't go like we just mentioned? Or did WWE freak out over the low ratings for this week's episode? 
Now, WWE should have been freaking out about the ratings on SmackDown Live for the longest. The ratings on Tuesday were a 2.1, and that has to do with the World Series, which was rigged, by the way. Okay, I, I want to let you guys know right now, a little sidebar. Professional baseball, MLB, or professional sports on that type of a stage is rigged. And you want to know why I know it's rigged? Because in 2014, who won the MVP? Was it Justin Turner? Won the MVP for the Houston Astros? ESPN, or, or no, it was Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated came out with a, a magazine with the Houston Astros prediction in 2014 saying that the Astros are going to be world champions in 2017 with the coincidental MVP on the cover of a magazine three years prior. Uh, and, and, and what happened? The same exact thing that they predicted happened in 2017. Now, either Sports Illustrated are really, 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 really good at their jobs, or someone has some type of inside information that we don't know of. Now, I, I find that to be completely bullshit. Nobody's going to predict the exact MVP. Nobody's going to predict the winner of the World Series when the Houston Astros three years ago were absolutely fucking at the bottom of the barrel, god-awful. Nobody's going to predict that. Then they're citing, oh, it's through statistics and numbers and reports and algorithms. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. No, it's not. No, it's not. Can you predict the Braves to win the World Series next year? Maybe it'll fucking come true. No. I'm sorry about that. The Dodgers looked like they rolled over and died before the game even started. That's coming from a team that had 100 wins this year, and you're in Game 7 of the World Series, and you're playing as if you don't even give a fuck? Give me a break, people. Give me a break. Do not believe professional sports are what they seem to be. It is all a fucking bullshit lie. And I know that from watching baseball all my life, man. I know that all my life. You ain't gonna fool me with that bullshit. Just a little sidebar. Now back to the regularly scheduled program. And baseball to me is a very, very heated discussion. I fucking hate professional sports and I don't look at anything the same anymore. Regardless of what happened with the Houston Astros, um, game six of the World Series on Halloween night uh, is what SmackDown Live went up against. And the ratings were terrible. But the ratings were terrible for SmackDown Live before we even got to the World Series because Jinder Mahal is a fucking failure. He's garbage. So WWE should have been thinking about taking the title off of him before they even got to Tuesday night and Halloween night during Game 6 of the World Series. If anything, WWE should realize that the ratings meant uh, nothing this week with the World Series going on. But if Mahal is injured, then it's possible that they've decided to take the title off of him. Now, Mahal has been wrestling with Kinesio Tape, like I said, on his shoulder. He has, really hasn't had a match on television, so we really can't see it, but he's been using it at the live events. On WWE.com, they've been teasing that Styles would go on to face Brock Lesnar at the Survivor Series if he wins the title. WWE.com article says, Mahal has been set on proving that he is the Beast Master and the top champion in all of WWE, but his Survivor Series showdown with the Beast could be in jeopardy if Styles dethrones him on SmackDown Live. So, either Mahal is hurt, or WWE is finally coming to the realization, six months too late, that Jinder Mahal is an absolute failure on WWE television as its champion. Now, WWE could, WWE could easily be playing up the fact that Jinder Mahal is hurt, you know? They, they, they could take the title off of him on Tuesday, we could get the AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar match at Survivor Series, which... I mean, I wouldn't want Styles to win the title and then ultimately get fed to Brock Lesnar in, in, in that manner. Uh, he doesn't deserve that. So I'm hoping if WWE does go with that plan, they have a way around it to make both guys look good coming out of it. But they could take the title off of Mahal and have Mahal win the title back after Survivor Series going into the Tour of India. That's not out of the question. So if WWE wants to load up Survivor Series with a more marquee match with AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar, they could simply do that and then just put the title right back on Jinder Mahal before they go to India. So that's not really out of the question and a big possibility or likelihood of happening. Now, 
the one thing I want to know is, they didn't know this three weeks ago. They didn't know this three weeks ago when we, or four weeks ago when we had uh, Hell in a Cell. If they knew that Jinder Mahal was potentially hurt and he was wearing Kinesio tape then, you know, why didn't they take the title off him and give it to Shinsuke Nakamura going into Survivor Series? I don't understand that, you know? It all goes back to WWE and what they did at Hell in a Cell. Why didn't they give us Shinsuke Nakamura becoming the WWE champion and then building up a program with Shinsuke Nakamura and Kevin Owens on SmackDown Live and, and us getting a dream match of Nakamura versus Brock Lesnar at the Survivor Series? I, I don't understand that logic. Now, WWE is doing everything backwards. WWE is doing everything rush, rush, rush. And I really don't understand why, you know? I don't want AJ Styles to be fed to Brock Lesnar. I don't want that at all. I don't really like this bragging rights theme for the pay-per-view anyway, you know? Either way you look at it, nobody's beating Brock Lesnar. Either way you look at it, whoever the WWE champion is, is going to be fed to Brock Lesnar. So no matter if it's Jinder Mahal, he's already made the title fucking look bad, but he's going to make the title look much worse, and WWE's going to lend to making that a reality. If they feed him to Brock Lesnar, the WWE champion, no matter who it is, is going to be fed to Brock Lesnar. Now, it might be a better match with Brock Lesnar, but how much of a better match is it going to be? Brock Lesnar hasn't wrestled more than five minutes in any match that he's put on this year. The longest match he's had is with is with Samoa Joe, and that clocked in at just about seven minutes. So, are we going to see AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar in, in five minutes? Uh, I mean, I, I don't understand what WWE's logic here is. None of this works. You know, it, it sounds good to the fucking idiot out there. Oh, AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I'd rather see that. Yeah, I'd rather see that too. But realistically, what's going to happen? Styles is going to lose. The WWE Championship is still going to look bad, right? And AJ Styles is not going to last more than five minutes against Brock Lesnar. How could he? How could he? Booking-wise, it doesn't make sense. And logistically, it doesn't make sense. So I don't know what WWE is doing here. You know, regardless of what happens at the Survivor Series, I think the main thing we need to focus on is WWE taking the title of Jinder Mahal. That's been the one thing that has been bothering me all year. The guy is a joke. The guy is pathetic. I look at him and I do not see a WWE champion, nor will I ever see WWE champion coming out of Jinder Mahal. He is an absolute embarrassment to that title right now, going on over 164 days. It is absolutely pathetic. So, WWE, they could take the title of Jinder Mahal, and it'll be a, I guess, a repair in progress. Let's get through Survivor Series, and let's hope that the WWE keeps the title on AJ Styles. That way, the title is on somebody legit. That way, Shinsuke Nakamura could then be built up as the next challenger for AJ Styles, have Nakamura win the Royal Rumble, and give us the match that we all want for the WWE Championship, and put the WWE Championship under a spotlight with two guys who are legit as anybody on the roster fighting over the company's biggest prize. That's what I ultimately want. Your main priority right now should be putting the title on someone who is a champion and repairing the damage done to the WWE Championship caused by Jinder Mahal. Everything else right now, yeah, it's a negative, yeah, it's obviously going to bother some people, but it's not as big of a deal as taking the title off of Jinder Mahal. I don't think WWE or WWE could easily just feed. Maybe this is all bullshit. You know, I haven't even mentioned the fact that WWE can ultimately feed Jinder Mahal AJ Styles before he even gets to Brock Lesnar, you know? Just solidifying the fact that Jinder Mahal is now calling himself the Beastmaster, right? And that he's going to tame Brock Lesnar. WWE, for all we know, could have Jinder Mahal beat AJ Styles clean on SmackDown Live and then go into Survivor Series and pull out a cheap victory over Brock Lesnar. Because you know Brock Lesnar doesn't give a fuck. He's making $6 million a year. He will lay down as long as that guy is getting a paycheck cut in front of him. He doesn't give a shit. So WWE could ultimately do that. Feed Mahal AJ Styles. Feed Mahal Brock Lesnar. Go to India and look like the biggest badass on the face of the planet. Do I think that is even fucking possible on this earth? No. Do I think WWE should even entertain that idea? No, because nobody believes anything coming out of Jinder Mahal's camp. They believe nothing the guy says. They, they don't believe in him being a WWE champion. It, it's all bullshit. It is all fucking bullshit. 
So WWE could realistically do that. I hope that's not the case, but that right now is a worst case scenario. Like I said, their main priority is taking the WWE champ, or their main priority should be taking the WWE championship off of Jinder Mahal. The ratings are going nowhere. The overall feeling of SmackDown Live is one of dread, and it all starts at the top. I've been saying this for months. It all starts at the top. When you have a WWE champion who cannot wrestle himself out of a paper bag in Jinder Mahal, everything else is going to suffer because of it. And I want to see this match that Mahal and Styles have. You know, there's trolls in the YWC saying that Jinder Mahal carried Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know what the fuck they're watching, but it goes both ways. Yeah, Shinsuke Nakamura really didn't do much in his match with Jinder Mahal, but he doesn't have much to work with. On top of that, why the fuck does he even want to work with Jinder Mahal when he knows he's the much more superior athlete compared to Jinder Mahal? So I don't understand why people are saying that Jinder Mahal carried Shinsuke Nakamura. I want to see AJ Styles carry Shinsuke. I want to see AJ Styles carry Jinder Mahal to a good match. I know he's going to bring Shinsuke Nakamura to one of the best matches he's had in WWE. That's that's no question. But I want to see AJ Styles and what he can do in a major situation here on SmackDown Live with Jinder Mahal. If he's if he could really do the unthinkable and bring Mahal to a good match, I don't think it's possible. I think Mahal is that bad. He is that bad. But like I said, WWE right now could be pulling the trigger on some on some changes, but if not, they could do that last thing that we talked about. They could feed Mahal Styles. They could feed Mahal Brock Lesnar. They could set up Cena versus Mahal at, at WrestleMania with, with Cena being the special guest referee like I showed you in that leaked poster. We don't know what's going on, man. SmackDown Live automatically became must-see this Tuesday. And I don't know what's going to happen with the Survivor Series team for Team SmackDown against Team Raw. Are they going to add Rusev? Are they going to add somebody else besides Rusev? I don't know. I don't know what, what's going on with that. So we might find out what's going to happen with that as well, being that they've been having qualifying matches for SmackDown Live and to see who joins SmackDown Live at Survivor Series. But all the members of Team Raw versus Team SmackDown before this announcement had been revealed by Mike Johnson of PW Insider. The WWE has already set up a number of matches for the Raw for a SmackDown Survivor Series pay-per-view event, with the announced matches featuring champion versus champion matches. Now, however, Mike Johnson from PW Insider reported that the main traditional Survivor Series matches have been announced. According to PW Insider, the big Survivor Series spoiler for the main event um, will see Kurt Angle lead Team Monday Night Raw against Shane McMahon and Team SmackDown. According to spoilers, Kurt Angle... Uh, and his team will include Roman Reigns, Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, and Finn Balor. So that is the five men representing Monday Night Raw. It was already announced that Reigns should be making his return uh, during the last two weeks of the Survivor Series build. Uh, he has been out with a reported case of the mumps. As for SmackDown Live, Shane McMahon will be leading his team into Survivor Series. And his team includes right now... Before we get into Manchester, England, and SmackDown Live, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Roode, and Randy Orton. We don't know who will be taking the place of AJ Styles. AJ Styles was going to be the fourth man. AJ Styles now will be challenging Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship. We don't know what WWE's plans are. If Styles loses, he probably will be on Team SmackDown. If AJ Styles wins, obviously they're going to have to find a replacement. Who that is, I don't know. So we'll see what happens on SmackDown. Like I said, it's going to be a must-see show for SmackDown Live on Tuesday. This makes this main event huge. And this is the second match all weekend that I'm looking forward to most, man. Outside of War Games, this match is going to be amazing. Now, you got a lot of you got a lot of talent in that ring, man. You got McMahon and Angle going at it. Obviously, they have a history together. Reigns and Nakamura has been something that I've been interested in seeing. You're going to have Bobby Roode going one-on-one -on -one with Samoa Joe. Bobby Roode versus Reigns. Bobby Roode versus Balor. Uh, Reigns versus uh, Orton again. Reigns versus Roode. You know, you're going to have Nakamura and Balor. Joe and Nakamura again. It's going to be, uh, or, or if Styles was there, Styles and Joe. A lot of combustible elements in that match. A lot of dream matches coming out of that Raw versus SmackDown match at Survivor Series. It's, it's going to make it a huge, must-see attraction for the Survivor Series. Ed Shane McMahon in there uh, with Braun Strowman, combustible elements. 
Uh, this is looking like a can't-miss match at the Survivor Series. Two men who are clearly missing from the Survivor Series team for SmackDown Live that we all thought would be there would be Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. My prediction is that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens will cost SmackDown Live and Shane McMahon the match at Survivor Series. Last year, SmackDown won it, and this year, I believe SmackDown will lose it thanks to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens saying, go fuck yourself to SmackDown Live and just do what they want to do because they run the show on Tuesday nights. Sami Zayn had an interesting analogy. He was on the Edge and Christian's Pod of Awesomeness, hosted by, obviously, Edge and Christian. Sami Zayn had an interesting analogy of his heel turn and new character ahead of Survivor Series. He was on Edge and Christian's podcast, and Sami Zayn spoke on a wide variety of topic, topics about his wrestling career. One of the main topics was about Sami's recent heel turn. Sami turned heel several weeks ago when he aligned himself with Kevin Owens at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. He has since taken on a new heel role. Sammy had some pretty interesting analogies to sum up his new character. This is what he said to Edge and Christian, and I quote, I'll try to sum up the character as easily as I can. The analogy that I would give is almost like when you're dating a girl, and she kind of has these quirks, but they're lovable quirks. But once you break up, it's like, oh God, she was so annoying. She would always hog the blankets. She would always want the room at 65 degrees or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, the things you used to love about her, now you hate about her because you don't love her anymore. It's almost, to me, that's where I'm at right now. It's like, the character isn't all of a sudden dyeing his hair black and wearing eyeliner or something like that. It's just, he's the same kind of guy. Now it just means something different because his intentions are different. End quote. Vince McMahon actually gave Sami Zayn one huge piece of advice on the eve of his heel turn. And Sami Zayn said that what Vince McMahon told him was, smile. As a heel, just go out there and smile. Vince McMahon usually has a lot of shitty ideas, but every once in a blue moon, the guy knows what he's talking about. Vince McMahon told Sami Zayn to smile. If you want to get under the skin... And on the nerves of the audience, and you're a heel, just smile, showing them that you don't give a shit about what you're saying. And I absolutely agree. Sami Zayn has a new breath on life, a new lease on life, and I'm enjoying what he's been doing as a heel on SmackDown Live, and I expect big things. Finally, after four years of Sami Zayn doing nothing, Sami Zayn now has an opportunity to make waves on SmackDown Live and WWE's main roster. We got the Survivor Series poster that I just talked about with John Cena being revealed as the special guest referee, which could still realistically happen. We just won't know anything concrete until Tuesday night. The new poster for the Survivor Series pay-per-view has leaked online. If you guys want to see it again, I'm going to show you again here. There it is, live Right in front of you. That's the Survivor Series poster with John Cena and Jinder Mahal uh, and Brock Lesnar right there featured in the main event of Survivor Series. Uh, it is leaked online. If you um, care about the match at all, great. If if not, you're probably with me in my boat. I just don't give a shit if John Cena is involved or not. The poster reveals clearly John Cena will be the referee for Lesnar versus Mahal. Dave Meltzer reported last week that they were hoping to get Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock for the role, but it depended on if they were up for it. Obviously, neither man were, and Vince McMahon couldn't get them to do the role, so obviously their only pick at this point was John Cena. The poster also features several top stars from both brands, but it does not give away anything for the traditional Survivor Series matches. Featured on the poster, obviously, Kurt Angle, Shane McMahon, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, Charlotte Flair, Dean Ambrose, Shinsuke Nakamura, Randy Orton, Baron Corbin, Alexa Bliss, and Finn Balor. Reigns is expected to be back by the November 13th edition of Monday Night Raw in Atlanta. So clearly, he'll be ready for Survivor Series. If you guys give a shit at all, uh, great. If not, like I said, you're probably in my boat. I couldn't give a single fuck. Speaking of Monday Night Raw, backstage news on Monday Night Raw's Under Siege angle 
and when Raw will retaliate. I mentioned that it wouldn't make any sense for WWE to have Raw attack SmackDown the next week, which they did not. Good on them. They will probably wait till the go-home show or when Roman Reigns comes back to Monday Night Raw and is cleared to be back in the ring. On October 23rd, Monday Night Raw SmackDown Live put Raw under siege. Shane McMahon brought his SmackDown roster and attacked multiple members of the Raw backs of the Raw roster backstage. Um, they uh, taped whatever you see in backstage that was taped earlier in the day. SmackDown was there live. They were obviously live on camera with Shane McMahon before they went backstage. But what you seen backstage was taped, and the reason why WWE taped it on that night before Monday Night Raw went live on the USA Network is because they wanted to recreate, or they wanted it to have a big fight feel. They wanted it to really be chaotic, and they wanted to really just nail it down the best that they could, uh, tape it, and then air it live on Monday Night Raw instead of have it happen live on Monday Night Raw as we were watching it. So they did tape the Under Siege backstage stuff, and then when they came back out live, obviously, uh, they did what they had to do. Dave Melcher, according to... Uh, To Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, we have some details on SmackDown's invasion of Raw. According to Meltzer, like I said, the angle was pre-taped and the stuff backstage was shot in the afternoon before Raw. Uh, They wanted it to look violent enough. Uh, Meltzer says that there were even some scenes that were edited out because it didn't even look like a fight. As for Raw's retaliation back on SmackDown, Meltzer says that it's possible it could happen next week if they want to do a full pre-tape. Raw and SmackDown have shows at the same exact time in the United Kingdom that are 87 miles apart. It seems more likely that WWE will wait to the November 14th episode of SmackDown Live in Charlotte, North Carolina, where they can do it live and mix in some more pre-taped stuff like they did on Raw. The November 14th episode of SmackDown Live is also the go-home show for the Survivor Series. I just mentioned that Roman Reigns will be cleared for Survivor Series. He will be back on Monday Night Raw in Atlanta on November 13th. So I could easily see The Shield with Reigns, Rollins, and Ambrose coming out and leading Monday Night Raw in their attack on SmackDown with Shane McMahon in the ring and giving him a triple powerbomb to close SmackDown Live as we go home for the Survivor Series. So they will probably do it on the go-home show for the Survivor Series on SmackDown Live. Now, the one thing I, I, I've been waiting to talk about here, how, how much more time do we have here? We're, we're, uh, we're 42 minutes in. Uh, I really don't have that much news, man. You know, I don't want to dip into my cookie jar, so I might end it right here. But we have Asuka possibly being involved with the female match on Survivor Series night with the, with the Raw roster. Asuka could be in the women's match, Raw vs. SmackDown match at Survivor Series, but her booking is causing major problems backstage, and I really don't know why this is causing major problems. Before I even read this piece of information, I don't understand why WWE even brought up Asuka if they weren't going to stay true to what she did for two years in NXT. I I just don't understand it. Why are you going to bring this woman up if you're not going to maintain what you've done with her for two years? Is it that fucking hard to come up with a concept for Asuka? Are the people on the main roster that fucking oblivious to what is going on in NXT? Why is it so difficult? Why must you ruin or why must you give yourself a difficult time when things have already been put in place for you? NXT did all the work for you. What is so difficult about this? You know? And then they want to release Emma. We're going to go over that tomorrow. Emma was released because she was trying to get herself over. Emma got released because she was complaining that she wasn't being used on Monday Night Raw. So uh, I guess that that goes for some and for others, I guess you're fired. Right? Or, or that goes for some and you're fired and then others can go on podcasts and complain about not having t-shirts and, you know, not being utilized, but then get a push on WWE television and even been given the role of captain for the women's division on Monday Night Raw, a.k.a. Alicia Fox. What? So obviously somebody backstage did not like Emma. 
Because that's bullshit. So, WWE, you're not going to wake up on a random Sunday morning and be like, yep, we're going to send out a tweet, Emma is fired. You knew that you wanted to fire Emma. Now, this is the mindset of WWE higher-ups. According to reports, they didn't even let creative know what their intentions were. So, creative are obviously a bunch of fucking idiots. They don't get, they don't matter in WWE, right? The higher-ups, yep, we're going to fire Emma on Sunday morning. And you think WWE creative was was told this, you know, within the last two weeks? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to be writing Emma off. I want you guys to write Emma off on television. She's going to be fired on such and such date. So book accordingly with her termination. That's what should have been done, and that's what should have been passed down to, to Monday Night Raw creative. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. WWE higher-ups, the people who are running this company, they don't give a shit about what happens on television. And that's a fucking deep-rooted issue. You have a bunch of suits in this company that don't give a shit about anything that happens on television. They only give about what they're, what they're making and what they're lining their fucking pockets with. That's bullshit. Because on top of that, not only did you let Emma go, who was one of the more talented women that you had on the roster, but you're actually causing negative effect to Asuka's main roster debut. No, but that's not a big issue, though, to those, to those people. That's not uh, an issue to the fans who are like, oh, Asuka's nothing special and this and that. Of course she's nothing special. When WWE portrays her as nothing special, it's going to reverberate, it's going to, you know, bounce back to you. It, it's going to, you're going to feel the effects of WWE not giving a shit, and it's going to hit you, and it's going to tell you, well, if WWE doesn't give a shit, then I'm not going to give a shit. You know? I don't understand how WWE can just look at Asuka and be confused about how to book her. WWE, I want to tell you that NXT laid the groundwork for you. Everything is done for you. You just got to follow the model that they've put forth. Simple. JD, how would you book Asuka at Survivor Series? Well, do you even put her on the Survivor Series team? I mean, there really is no other women on the roster unless you want to have a returning page come back to, to, to take her spot. But, you know, you know, if they want to make it big, yeah, just have Paige come back. She's cleared to go, right? Paige was on social media bragging about training with Mandy Rose and Ember Moon and Ruby Riot and Billy Kay and Peyton Royce that they're all kicking her ass down at the performance center, getting her ready to come back to television. If you want to have the Raw women's roster at Survivor Series be Alicia Fox, Nia Jax, Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Paige, then fine. But then, where's Asuka going to fit in? Or... You can have the team of Alicia Fox, Nia Jax, Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Asuka. Now, the way you would book this thing, how do you book it? Simple. Asuka does not get a tag the entire match. Asuka does not get a single fucking tag in the entire match. Alicia Fox is the captain of your SmackDown or, or of your Monday Night Raw women's roster, right? Alicia Fox is portrayed as a lunatic. She has a few screws loose. She ain't all there. Her leadership skills will show that she was not capable of leading Team Raw against SmackDown Live. Now, on SmackDown Live, you have Carmella, you have Becky, you have Charlotte, you have Naomi, and you have uh, Tamina, right? Okay. Those are the women on SmackDown Live. Could be better. Tamina's fucking garbage. Tamina is trash. But regardless of that, you know, that's the SmackDown team. Because Natalia is taking on Alexa Bliss in a uh, women's champion versus champion match. But Asuka does not get the tag in the entire match. Now, you would have, on Raw, you would have Team Captain Alicia Fox. She'd get eliminated. Because her leadership skills aren't up to par as what they need for a leader. Nia Jax would be eliminated. And you could make her be eliminated by a count out or disqualification. Have her look rugged or brutal. Have her look dominating in going out. And that's what you would do. I think they booked her the same way they did last year. Or book her the same way that, like they did last year. 
Sasha Banks would get eliminated. Bailey would get eliminated, and that would leave Asuka all by herself. Whether you want an elimination to happen on the other team, maybe you get rid of uh, Tamina because she sucks, and, and you're left with Becky, and you're left with Charlotte, and you're left with Naomi, and you're left with Carmella. Maybe if you want to leave... Those three, you have Carmella and Tamina eliminated. It would be a little bit ridiculous, if you guys know where I'm going with this, if it's completely a five-on-one decimation. You don't want to make the whole fucking roster look bad. But you would have Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky. It would be a three-on-one situation. Asuka seemingly has the odds stacked against her during her first ever Survivor Series. How do you book it? How do you book it? Asuka Lock. Asuka Lock, Asuka Lock. Asuka would dominate for Monday Night Raw. Asuka would eliminate Charlotte. Asuka would eliminate Becky. Asuka would eliminate Naomi. Obviously, with Charlotte being the last one. And you put those two women as the last women in, and you build to a great epic conclusion for that women's match with two of the best female performers that you have on that roster, with Asuka coming out on top, saving Team Raw, eliminating three of WWE's top females on SmackDown Live, and you book her from that day forward as a dominating force that should be squashing everybody until her first major title win on Monday Night Raw. Asuka must be the last remaining survivor for Monday Night Raw. Asuka must eliminate everybody like Roman Reigns. It was, it was that difficult for WWE to book Roman Reigns in his first Survivor Series. What was it? He had four eliminations in that one match? There's no reason why you can't do the same thing for Asuka. There's no reason. That's how Asuka needs to be booked at Survivor Series. And I don't want to hear, well, JD, you can't do that. JD, that's illogical booking. JD, blah, blah, blah. This, this, this. You can't do that, that, that. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You want to make Asuka stand out amongst everybody else because you hyped her up so much? Now, you have to fucking swallow that bitter pill. And you have to book her in a way where WWE isn't comfortable booking anybody from NXT. Because NXT has laid the groundwork for Asuka. It should not be this difficult to book Asuka the right way. You're going to put her on the Survivor Series team. There's not going to be anybody else there. You're not going to put Dana Brooke in her spot. This is a perfect stage for Asuka to assert dominance. Not only against some of the top female performers on the other brand, but assert dominance on Raw, where she doesn't have to beat anybody. She could stand amongst the top as the sole reason why Raw won. If that's not bragging rights amongst the locker room on your brand, and you don't have to make anybody look bad immediately, I don't know what to tell you, WWE. I don't know what to tell you. Don't book the match any other way. Asuka needs to dominate just like Roman Reigns did. I forgot what year it was. I even forgot against who. But I know he had three or four eliminations in that Survivor Series. Roman Reigns needs, or Asuka needs to be booked like Roman Reigns was during his first Survivor Series. That's the way it needs to be done. Now, according to the report here, the Empress of Tomorrow has quite the reputation following from NXT, or following her from NXT after her historic title reign as NXT Women's Champion for 523 days. A broken collarbone ended her reign, but it was a golden opportunity to make the jump to the main roster and have her remain unde undefeated, or unbeaten, undefeated, whatever. Asuka made her debut at WWE TLC and defeated Emma in a solid match. Solid match. Some fans have been arguing that her booking hasn't been strong enough since debuting on Monday Night Raw. The general feeling is that Asuka came in with too much hype and she needs to be more dominant even against some of the best performers on Raw. It's been rumored that Asuka versus Sasha Banks is coming soon, but that won't happen before the Survivor Series because the pay-per-view is being sold as Raw vs. SmackDown Live. In fact, Asuka's booking heading into the event has started creating some huge problems backstage. It's being reported 
that including Asuka in the Raw vs. SmackDown Live women's match is a big matter of debate amongst WWE officials right now because no one wants to book her to lose even by disqualification. So don't book her to lose! I just told you how to do it! Put her in the match and do exactly what I said! Problem solved! However, a lot of people are being cautious about excluding her from the match entirely because she might be seen as unimportant and outside the Raw Women's Division, which is not something WWE officials want to do at this juncture. The best choice seems to be including Asuka in the match and booking her to get the dominating victory for Raw at the event, like I stated, like I booked, like I fantasy booked, rather. That could also create another problem because WWE officials would likely have to make some changes to the finishes of the other matches. The stars that that B want Raw to win the night overall, or the powers that be want Raw to win the night overall, and they might have been planning for SmackDown's women to defeat Raw's women during that match. If Asuka is in there, yeah, it might be predictable, but it needs to be done. You know, you could give SmackDown a victory somewhere else. Have Baron Corbin go over the Miz. Have, have, have Natalia go over... Ale Alexa's been pushed to the fucking moon. Uh, Alexa losing to someone who is easily a better wrestler and in-ring performer than her is not going to harm Alexa in any way. So if you're worried about giving Raw the overall victory at Survivor Series for all these matches, if you're worried about giving Raw more victories at the end of the night over SmackDown, it it's easily fixable. Why, you don't need to push Alexa as... You know, this end-all, be-all for the women. Natalia is the much superior in-ring performer than Alexa. Losing to Natalia is, is not going to have Alexa head her, you know, hang her head in shame at the end of the night. You lost to the better, the better wrestler. It's not going to do anything for Alexa if she loses. It's not going to harm her in any way. So SmackDown can get a victory there. Baron Corbin, can, who needs a victory, you know, after the fucking recent bullshit that they got going on with Sin Cara, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Have Baron Corbin take his frustrations out on The Miz. Have him give the end of days to The Miz. You got two wins right there. That's all they need. Team Raw is going to win the men's. Team SmackDown uh, can lose the women's match like I, like I fantasy booked here. Raw, you know, Brock Lesnar ain't going to lose. So, so what? That, that's it right there. You don't need to... Worry about having SmackDown look inferior. They could get the, the the win over Alexa. They could get the win over The Miz. That's it. That's all you need. At least they get some victories on Sunday night at Survivor Series. But if it makes sense for Asuka to be there and it makes sense for Asuka to look strong, then book it the way it should be booked. So, having her in the match uh, might change the overall finishes. Uh, that That's easily... Easily fixable. Like all undefeated pushes, they create booking issues heading into multi-man matches like these. Obviously, it doesn't take a fucking uh, intelligent human being to book one of these things. So, uh, any one of you could have, could have probably come up with that. I'm just stressing that that is the issue. That is the scenario that needs to happen. Now, Asuka's push isn't expected to end anytime soon crossing our fingers. You never know what this fucking company. But WWE officials need to decide the best course of action. Asuka may get a separate match against someone from SmackDown Live. She may be the sole survivor during the women's match at Survivor Series. We don't know yet. Heading into the pay-per-view, WWE officials obviously need to make a decision. I just told you how it should be done. There should be no booking problems. There should be no major issues when it comes to Asuka's booking. Like I stated, and I don't think anybody's going to, uh, you know, disagree with me. NXT laid the groundwork. WWE, it's like they have the fucking cheat notes. It's like you're cheating off the Chinese kid in calculus class. <laughs> you know what? Let me look at you. Uh, let me look over there. Uh, what's the answer to number seven? Or uh, D? Oh, okay. It's like they got the fucking answers right there. It's like NXT's giving you the cheat sheet. Just copy what they're doing. You don't need to be all different and all, and all, uh, oh, oh my god, all mighty Monday Night Raw. It's all the same fucking company. Your son-in-law is running the fucking brand. Just do what he did and suck it up and fucking shut your mouth and put the ego away, lock it away for the night. All because NXT's doing something better than Monday Night Raw each and every fucking week. You don't gotta get your fucking underwear all twisted up. 
and, and you know, take it out on, on, the, on the fans. Well, this is Monday Night Raw. We can't be upstaged by NXT. You know? Just do what is right for the fucking performers that you are, are, are putting on this show. Just do what needs to be done. Do what's right. Do what's right by the performers and do what's right by the fans. I can't stress this enough. I can't. I mean, there's no simpler way for me to put it. NXT gave or is giving Monday Night Raw the cheat notes for Oscar. There is nothing in between. There's nothing here that's overly complicated that a fucking idiot can't figure out. And if you don't like Oscar, if you if you're 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 losing you know patience with Oscar already, or if she isn't nothing special to you, well, I don't give a shit what you say. WWE has an ample opportunity here. A, a 500 day reign doesn't just appear on your doorstep out of nowhere. WWE has something here that they ran with, that they booked, and it's it's here. And now you have to book it accordingly. Do you want Oscar to be? To be just another footnote in NXT? Or you want Asuka to be the most dominating female performer that this company has ever seen? She has an opportunity to do that. I don't know why Monday Night Raw and the people who are in charge of this show aren't jumping at the fucking fact that they have something like that on their show. That's a fucking booker's wet dream right there. Just let me book the women's division. I'll take it to fucking heights that you never seen on Monday Night Raw. Because obviously whatever the fuck they're doing on Raw now, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Asuka needs to be dominating. Becky, Naomi, Charlotte. Done, done, done. Asuka lock, Asuka lock, Asuka lock. And the last two women, Asuka and Charlotte. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what the fuck will, man. Check your fucking pulse. Asuka needs to be dominating at Survivor Series. And that is off the script. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Lots of content in this episode. And I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about Emma. We're going to be talking about Emma and the real reasons why Emma was released from the WWE. It should be a shock to nobody why she was released when I go over it with you guys. But Emma is done, and I got the reason why she is done. So that is off the script. Thank you guys so much. Follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that bell for notifications barbershopwindow.com slash off the script for your t-shirts patreon.com slash jd from ny206 if you guys want to support the podcast and the channel monthly and then you got wrestlecrate.com for the unboxing that we did find sponsor of off the script wrestlecrate.com use coupon code jd sent me at check out. Thank you guys so very much for everything. I'll be back on Saturday morning with more off the script. Until then, enjoy your Fridays. Happy Call of Duty World War II day, and I'll see you guys somewhere on YouTube or Twitch with Call of Duty World War II. I'm JD. Make it a great Friday, and I'll see you guys on Saturday for off the script.